Okay, you gang. We are in Brownwood, Texas right now. Just got here. Came from Hamilton on the Billy the Kid story. Gonna lay over here and then I'm heading south. Well, west and then south. But I wanted to stop at this cemetery, Greenleaf, because there's a hero that's buried here, a hero of mine, a baseball player, the Chicago White Sox. Now, when I was little, you know, my family was White Sox fans, and my dad would take me to the games, like a lot of dads. And one of my heroes was No Neck Williams. They called him No Neck. Walter Williams. He's an outfielder, strong guy, and a good hitter. And he was like Mr. Hustle back then for the Chicago White Sox. Well, I remember we were sitting way up in the nosebleed grandstands at a White Sox game. I don't know who they were playing. Walter was up. It was left field, just past the third base, up way up there, up where the roof, you have to look down. And all of a sudden, a foul ball came flying in there, bouncing around like a pinball at light speed and there I am like a lot of kids with the hat and my mitt. Always brought my mitt to the game. Dad always said you never know and that was my chance but I was too little. I, I was like and my dad shot out from the seat into that concrete step corridor and he got that ball. No Neck Williams hit that ball and I got it. So I really want to see No Neck here. I want to pay him a visit. But sadly, he died six or seven years ago. I can't remember, but I do remember hearing of his passing. Now I'm walking from this side. We're not going to see a lot of the front of these stones. I did this on purpose because we have people, a lot of birth dates. Now, when you see my videos and we, I, I will censor out the birth dates because identity theft, I mean, people are putting their birth dates on and anyone could get the birth date off my video and their exact birth date, they're still alive. A lot of the people are still alive. They have their names inscribed. And I really don't think they should do that, but it, it's, the way it is. So that's why I'm walking from this side. Now, Walt grew up here in Texas. He was born here. He was nicknamed No Neck due to his, well, his relatively short stature. He was five foot six inches tall and he was very compact and muscular. His odd appearance was from a typhus injection he had received when he was a baby. There was a flood here. The government was giving everybody typhus injections. By the way, there's like a factory over there. There's a loudspeaker going. If you hear that in the background, that's what that is. Anyway, he was so muscular even as a baby that they couldn't reach a vein except in the back of his neck. So that's where they gave him the injection. It had an effect. He developed a crick in his neck as a little one and it just kind of stiffened and shrank. So that's, that's the deal there. Now he was sent out to his aunt in San Francisco as he's growing up there. And there he went to a high school called Galileo High School. He played football, basketball, and baseball. Now he signed with the Houston Colt 45s as an amateur free agent in 1963. Of course, he picked baseball. And after spending one season in the minor leagues, he made it into the majors at the age of 20 with the Colt 45s, April 21st, 1964. Played in only 10 games with the Colt 45s when he was selected off waivers. May 26, 1964, by the St. Louis Cardinals. 
He was sent back to the minor leagues, but he would re-emerge to the majors, and he would spend many years with the White Sox. And as I said, he was known for he was known for being Mr. Hustle and also Mr. Cheerful. Everybody loved him. And there was a play, and by the way, at the end, I'm going to, this grave's right over here. I'm going to play, I found on, on YouTube some excerpts from, from a, some actual play calls from the day, from one of the games. Of the year, not the game, that was it, but of the year of the game that I was at. So he did real well with the White Sox, and he was quite a character. Again, my hero. I wish I could have met him. Now, they were in the pennant race, and one good example that he demonstrated on June 14th was against the Red Sox. The base runner on second base, no neck was in right field. There was a line drive that came out to him as a single, so he throws it in the home plate to try to stop that runner who was rounding third. But the first baseman, Tom McCraw, intercepted it. He cut it off, and they trapped the hitter in a rundown. He had run down to first base, and here's, here's the grave. Now, nobody was paying attention, but old Nonek, he was backing up the whole play. He came from nowhere when the throw came in and went wide and... He got the ball just before it went in the dugout. He sprang to his feet and threw it to second base where Hansen tagged the runner out. And the crowd went wild. He was a fan favorite. Here it says, loving parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents. He came here back to his hometown to live his life out. It says, I have fought the good fight, I finished my course, I have kept my faith. Which is a verse. It's a nice bench here. In remembrance of the love we shared. Now, whose case is that? That's my case. That is actually my drone, Little Jimmy. And I put that there because one of the family members' name is there and their birthday's there and they're still alive. And I didn't, I didn't want that to, uh, to show up. So there's some great pictures you see there. I believe that's his wife, by the way, Esther May. Yes. So there you see the inscription, passed in January, January 23rd, 2016. And here's the etching, I think if I, yep, yeah, we can see better if I do that. It's a great picture of no neck. Walt Williams, Walter Williams, what a great guy. Now this picture I really want to see. His beautiful wife, look at, he looks good. Look at that smile, Walter. I wish I would have got your autograph, buddy. And I'm not an autograph seeker. But it's a childhood memory, Walt. You, you were really special. I remember you. Special days. Living in, growing up in Chicago. Yes, we've got our train folks. That's Walt. That's Walt talking to us. After retiring as a player, he worked as the sports director here at the Brownwood Community Center. He was such a giver of his own time. He then served as the White Sox first base coach during the 1988 season, 92. He managed some minor league teams, but he retired in 94. And it would be a heart attack that would take Walt, our Walt, my Walt, on January 23rd, 2016. He was in Abilene, actually, at the time, Abilene, Texas. 
Walt was 72, 72 years old. Rest in peace, Walt Williams. Williams playing left field, A.G. in center field, and Calavito in right field. Ward at third, Hanson at short. So here is Walter Williams now with a teammate at second base and one out. Walter bunts down the third baseline. He's got a good chance. He is at first base by a country mile. Little Walter dumped one, and he was at first base. <laughs> Well, the third baseman didn't even bother throwing the ball. Tommy Maloney, Ernie Carroll. Always listening back at the ballpark. Don Karinczyk. Here's a pop fly, a hit to right in front of the right fielder. So little Walter has himself a pair of hits here. And that for the White Sox is hit number six. Boston has made two. Here is the pitch, and he hits a high fly ball to left center. It's going to be caught. Williams is coming on. They collide, but he held on to the ball. Williams and A.G. collided, and A.G. is calling time now. He may have been spiked. So we are going to have time out here now as Williams held on to the ball but may have spiked Tommy A.G., and we're going to have to wait and see spike on the foot as he took off his shoe you could see the blood on the uh, on the sock and Tommy Agee is down there as Charlie Sad goes out to take a look at him Eddie Stanky went out the rest of the players also out there Rocky Colavito, Walt Williams as Walter cut right across and took it in front of Tommy Agee and stepped on Tommy's foot as Tommy tried to pull up in time to let Walt have the ball One out and nobody on in the bottom of the second. White Sox, three, four, and one. Boston, nothing, nothing, nothing. No runs, no hits, no errors. Here is a well tagged long drive. Deep left center field. It comes down and it is caught. That wind held that ball up. I thought, sure, that ball was going to go on the wall. And Walter Williams and A.G. collided again back on the warning track. But... This time, Tommy A.G. held on to the ball. So they better get a traffic cop out there or Walter's going to stop all over them, right? <laughs> I tell you, when you run into that little fire plug, you know you run into something. And when Tommy caught the ball, he looked at Walter, Walter looked at him, and Tommy just shook his head in disbelief. Tommy looking over to Colavito saying, it's your turn now. <laughs> Here is Rico Petroselli. This one puts down a thirst without filling you up. Heilemann's Old Style. The one beer that's brewed twice, not just once like other beers. Pure brewed. A second brewing that makes Old Style easy to stay with, glass after glass. Pure brewed by G. Heilemann of La Crosse, Wisconsin. Old Style. The light and likable brew.